Abang Ade is a critically acclaimed local film across international film festivals. But the question is, why? Hey everyone, I'm Siddharth Jodev and this is what I think of Abang Ade. Abang Ade is a Mandarin Malay language Malaysian film written and directed by Jin Ong, starring Wu Kang Ren and Jack Tan in leading roles playing Abang and Ade. Now, in the heart of Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, Abang and Ade, two undocumented orphans, lives a pretty shitty life. Abang, the older brother, played by Wu Kang Ren, is deaf and mute and has already accepted his life of poverty. Meanwhile, Ade, the younger and more rebellious one, played by Jack Tan, always does something stupid or, in his case, perfectly justifiable to fight the system of injustice. Now, both their lives take a hit when a particular incident happens, making their difficult life even harder. Now, the rest of the film is about the aftermath of this particular incident incident, which I'm not going to tell you what, you have to go and watch the film. It's kind of overwhelming to even speak about the story and screenplay. Let me try. Now, the core of the film is the journey of undocumented or stateless individuals. Undocumented or being stateless is not new in Malaysia. You know, there have been many, many cases due to multiple reasons. Malaysia-born kids couldn't get into a proper school or land into a proper job because, you know, the lack of documents and stuff. Now, this is the basic premise of the film and everything else is built around this, this idea of being undocumented. But the thing is, Yes. This film is not a campaign. This film is not advocating that the government should recognize stateless individuals or anything, but it merely showcases the problems and struggles one faces being stateless in this country. Like as simple as having to run away from the immigration department raids while you're sleeping in the middle of the night, or not having the privilege of keeping your savings, your money in bank account because you can't have one. In this film, the marginalized community, which is the stateless people, continues to suffer from discrimination and lack of opportunities and lack of legal rights. Now, how do you take such a serious subject and make it into a movie? You do what Jin Ong did. You introduce a love story between brothers. The writing of this film is honest, raw, and for most part, brutal. One of the earlier scenes shows a sequence at a wet market in Pudu, I guess, where the camera captures a group of butchers casually butchering a chicken, taking it out of the coop, snapping its neck or something, and then processing it. You know, you see the entire gruesome process that makes you go, what the hell? But it sets the tone for the film as in how raw the entire storytelling is going to be. This is not kindergarten level portrayal of hardship. You know, it is it is kind of heartbreaking kind of portrayal. So much so, when there are happy moments in this film, you as an audience feel like a bit better for the characters. Like you feel like, oh, finally, they are happy about something. They're laughing about something. But more than anything, this is an original storytelling. I don't know, or at least I have not seen any local film that talks about hardship of stateless people in this country as much as this film has, which is why I feel like Abang Adi is one of a kind. Also, what makes the film a lot more interesting is the love story between the brothers, Abang and Ade. This film isn't anything like the 2011 Warrior, where estranged brothers fight each other in an MMA tournament, or nothing like the 2009 Brothers starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Tobey Maguire, where one is sent to the war in Afghanistan and the other one slept with the brother's wife. See, socially, brothers are expected to roughen up and challenge each other, but in this film, the brothers show love and affection to each other, which is not that common. Trust me, I have a brother. The brothers in this film are not competing, but they cook for each other, they provide for each other, they protect each each other and most importantly they show love for each other you know there's a scene in this film where both these brothers had an argument abang and ade and they want to make up for the fight they had and they do it at a birthday party while doing a slow dance you know hugging each other and stuff now this is not something that happens between brothers but the intimacy that is shown here between these two brothers who wishes nothing but the best for each other is so freaking poetic in this film. You know, every single moment they created in this film makes you go like, oh, this is so good. However, I will warn you that this film is a very, very slow moving film. You know, the film is not edgy. It's not fast paced like the recent release on Prime Videos, which is put out flat. And I'm someone who hates slow paced film. But surprisingly, this film had me invested the whole time. That's how good the script and screenplay was. The direction of the film is so solid that you become so overwhelmed by Jin Ong's narrative. You know, the characters, their developments and their moments become so personal that you feel bad for every single one of these characters on screen. Jin Ong also directed the film in a way where in most scenes, silence does the talking. No background scores, no sound effects, no, just, just the actors on screen in absolute silence and it's so damn powerful. There's a two to three minute scene of Wu Kang Ren delivering his big speech in sign language. And the only thing you can hear is the sound of his handcuff hitting the table. It is so heartbreaking because usually this kind of scenes, people always amp it up with a lot of background scores and sound effect. But this is just the silence does a lot of talking. 
One of the biggest reasons why this film speaks to us personally is because of the actor's performances. Playing the leading role, Wu Kangren as Abang delivered the most painful, heartbreaking and honest portrayal of a deaf and mute man. Now this man, without saying a single dialogue, won all our hearts. He conveys hope, grief, loss, happiness, disappointment and fear with just his eyes. You know, he demands for your attention, time and empathy. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a big scene where he delivers his speech with just sign language in a close-up shot. He talks about life opportunities and and you will cry if you ask me that scene alone should be in his acting reel on par with his performance you have jack tan who plays ade you know there are instances you will hate this character because you feel like half of the trouble in the story doesn't exist if this character doesn't behave the way he does but along the way you understand ade yeah he is wrong but still you feel for him you know that's how good jack tan is in portraying this role he is foolish he is reckless he is lazy but very lovable he's stupid but he fights for the people he loves the funnier bits from this film comes from his performance you know there's there's so much innocence in the way he looks at you. You know, in every scene, Jack is involved. He gives 110%, be it the fight sequences, running away from police, not running away from police, asking random hookup to marry him. You know, he's easily one of the finest performers that we have in this country. Together, these two brothers have solid powerhouse performance. The brothers, their intimacy and the chemistry makes you believe that this is actually more like a documentary rather than a fictional film. The final scene in this film where the brothers come together you must watch this film, at least for that scene. Now, adding to this incredible cast is the delightful Tan Kim Wang playing Money. Money is funny, sincere, lovable, and has such a nurturing energy. We all need a money in our life. You know, the mother-like nagging, the father-like care. Tan Kim Wang completes this cast in every other way. And then you also have Serene Lim, Kafe Rakba, Bron Palare fitting into this poverty-driven world perfectly, making every scene powerful. Also, this film is the most Malaysian film ever made. So most of the film is in Mandarin language, right when you watch this film you will see malaysia and malaysians everywhere you see malays you see chinese you see indians bangladesh immigrants indonesian immigrants you know this world building the world that they've created is very true in the sense that you can go to kl right now any part of kl chow kid or pudu you will see the same kind of people that exist in the movie existing there in real life the buddhist monk the malay police officer the sound of azan in the background the indian lady selling chandol at the roadside everything in this film is truthfully malaysia and this is my favorite thing about the movie the cinematography, it's perfection. They are just not frames and shots and people in it. Every frame is so, it's an art. You can pause or stop this film at any part, any point. You can freeze the frame and every single frame is an art. The art department, the set design, the costumes are done unbelievably well. It's as if like the crew just pick up the camera and they just went down to the streets and they said, okay, let's just start filming. You know, none of this, uh, this thing that they created look fake. They all look very bloody original and real. The lighting crew should be very proud of themselves because every scene, the amount of lights allowed into frame is delicious, it's beautiful. There are the shadows, the darkness, the shades, everything is just so... The DOP captures the actors, the surroundings and the world so freaking well, you can completely mute this film and the visuals itself will tell the story. The editing of the film, the transitions of both visual and sound, they are crispy, snappy and very, very satisfying. I believe the cinematography is one of the biggest reasons why this silent or slow-paced film became a lot more enjoyable to watch. Oh, and also finally we have a Malaysian film where the colour grading doesn't look like a Petronas ad film. You know, this was one of my biggest ick with this year's Hungry Goes Dying where the cyberpunk aesthetic colors kind of kind of kill the believability of the film in this film the color grading is just so oh beautiful so on a scale of 1 to 10 abang ade is I watched the final 15 minutes of this film crying, ugly crying, thinking about how life would have been a bit more different for Abang and Ade if they were a bit more privileged. Left the theater feeling so grateful for all I have and I want you to have the same experience. See you at the movies. Thank you for watching the video. If you would like to watch more reviews and podcasts and a lot more fun stuff, we are Kpo on all platforms.